In this screencast, I'm going to talk about the Learn Dash Group Registration Module that's part of the Pro Suite of Modules for the Uncanny Learn Dash Toolkit. This module is definitely the most complex in the Pro Set of Modules, at least at the time of recording. So it's going to be a longer screencast and it is a little confusing, so we definitely recommend that you check out the Knowledge Base as well, which is on the Uncanny Owl website. So I'm going to walk through essentially how it will work and what the user experience is going to be like first and then we'll take a look at uh, settings and some of the other options that are available. So of course the first thing you'll want to do when you use the Learn Dash Group Registration module is to turn it on here. And when you turn it on here that now allows or it creates unique URLs where users can visit to self-register in uh, on the WordPress site and be added directly to Learn Dash groups. So one note here is that first registration has to be allowed in WordPress. So when you are setting up your WordPress site you will want to make sure that anyone can register as it's set up here. And then by turning that on in the toolkit if we go into the Learn Dash groups list it also adds a couple of meta boxes. So let's go into group A and I, I should preface this just by saying that this is a demo platform. It's demo content. It's not valid. Um, so it's it could be a little confusing because there is a certainly a lot of test data in here. Now group A at uh, this point is pretty empty. There's not much there but let me show you what's happened just by turning on the module. So if I visit this page and I'm going to open it in a new tab so if I visit this page now, this is only available to administrators. And what it does is it exposes a registration link for this group. So if this link is distributed to users that aren't registered yet, they would be able to go here and register. They'd be added as a user to WordPress and they would also be added to the group that's associated with this URL. So you can see it adds a unique string at the end here um, that does enroll the user in the group. So only people with that URL will be able to register. But it is public, so they're like out of the box, there's no password protection or anything, but anyone with that specific URL can register for the group and they would be added to it. So that's what happens out of the box. And then again, there is a simple registration form. So let's take a look at that and what that looks like. Out of the box, it does not look very good. There's not much there. It's pretty empty over here. There is a login form. Um, there is a registration form over here, but it's very basic. And we did want to include something in case users don't have other plugins to use. But what we have done is added support for Gravity Forms, which is what we would recommend using with the user registration add-on, as well as Theme My Login as a free alternative. So definitely check those out. And then what you can do is you can use um, a short code for a registration form and just drop it into the description of the group. And that will take care of that. And then you, you don't have to worry about the styling as much and it's going to be easier to manage. But still, this out-of-the-box form is there. You can manage it with CSS so it looks a little cleaner and uh, still have something usable. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and let's go back to the group settings. So the group itself, close that as well. Let's go back. So you might have seen on there that above the form there was some text. So if you're not using a plugin like Gravity Forms or Theme My Login, um, the form for registration would appear beneath any text you have here. And usually you'll, you're probably used to this area, so the editor um, and any text you put in here not being visible on the front end, so not really serving any purpose for most Learn Dash groups. But in the case of the group registration, it's definitely used. And any content you have here will show up on the registration page for users. So um, I could add whatever content I, I wanted here. I might say, um, please register below. And I want to show an example with uh, Gravity Forms instead because that's what we would typically use for something like this. Um, I'm just going to drop in a short code 
So there is a short code. This is a, a registration form that I'd set up previously, but just a simple registration form, and you'll see it in a second. So now if uh, a user returns to that page, they would see the Gravity Form registration. Um, but before I do that, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I didn't keep the URL from the front end registration. Let's open that again as a regular user. Take a look at the Gravity Form now. So you can see this is a much cleaner example um, with, with Gravity Forms set up. So we've got the registration form here. Over here we've got a simple login form, and again you can restyle this of course with CSS or something. This one, we do have it in here. There's not an easily editable template file, um, just because um, it, it's a little difficult to expose that. We wanted something simple. It can be hidden with CSS if you don't want it on there, so you just use a display none for that, uh, that form. Um, but we did want something there just in case users already have an account, they still end up at that page. And then the important thing too is uh, enrolling in multiple groups or switching groups, which I'll talk about a little later in the screencast. So anyway, this is exposed here. Um, the next thing I want to show is what we like to do when uh, we're using the groups for registration. And, and this kind of thing is particularly helpful when you're signing up different organizations and you want the organizations to be able to let their users enroll directly into the group for that company. Um, we need some kind of branding or um, something to identify, you know, whose registration page is this? So they know that they're at the right URL. Um, and if they have any problems, who can they contact? So who can give them information directly from their company um, about getting registered. So what we've done for that, we have these four optional fields here. And I don't know, maybe maybe the organization is, uh, I'm just going to put a sample in here. The contact is me in this case. And I'm going to put our phone number in there. Okay, so let's say we want all that contact information in there just in case, you know, the person has any questions. Um, so we'll go ahead and update that. Okay, so I'm back to the registration form and let's refresh the page. You can see now it's added those details so that anyone getting to this page now has a bit of context. They know they're in the right spot. Um, you can see again, like this is where I added the text. You could add text beneath that um, as well, beneath the short code. That you can't do if you're not using a short code, so if you're using the built-in registration, you can add text beneath the form. Um, but if you're using Gravity Forms or Theme My Login, then you can definitely uh, do something like that. So the organizational contact details are here. All of this is customizable, and uh, we'll show that in a few minutes. Um, now that we've added that, let's talk about the behavior if someone is registering. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to register a sample user here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, so I've already set up the mappings. Again, you, if you're not familiar with Gravity Forms, definitely go through a test example. So like all my mappings are done. I know the, how this is going to behave. Um, so let's go ahead and add uh, me here. So I'll use that and I'll use a different email address. Let's uh, let's use. OK, and I'm going to set a password there as well. And let's go ahead and register me as this anonymous user. OK, so again, um, now that the user's been registered, um, actually, that wasn't a good title then, was it? I probably shouldn't have included the text above because now it doesn't really make sense in this context. But again, you can, you can kind of manage uh, that text and put something appropriate there. So let's go ahead and log in with my email address and password so let's let's move that around and again this is just a demo site so and because I've resized it for uh, use in the screencast that uh, there's some overlap issues anyway so I signed up with uh, actually I didn't assign any courses to this group so that's uh, that's not a good example but what I can show instead um, if I refresh the page, so right now if I scroll down, you can see a list of users that are part of this right now. So what I can do is I can refresh the page. Uh, 
And when I refresh the page, I should now see my new user. So you can see down here, Ryan LMS at uncannyowl.com has been added as a group user. So this user is now part of the group. So I'm going to switch back to the toolkit settings now. Uh, that's not it. I'm going to go back in this way. So let's take a look at the toolkit settings again so that we can talk through how things work in a little more detail. So let's go into the Learn Dash Group registration. And uh, these, these labels may change um, by the time you view this video. So let's talk through the first radio button selections here first. Um, allow users to join multiple Learn Dash groups. What this means is if a user has or is given access to multiple registration URLs, so for different groups, what should happen? So if they've already registered into a single group, they're already part of a group, they go to another group's registration URL. If they log in there, or they're already logged in, or if they register, well, they can't register from there. Take that example back. If they log in from there, or they visit it when they're logged in, this defines the behavior. So if this is yes, well, that means then when they visit, they're logged in, whatever, they're added to that second group because they have that registration URL. Um, if this is no, then what happens is we switch their groups. So whatever group they're part of already gets dropped, they get added to the new group instead. So the default is no. That can be a little dangerous because it will drop people from groups. If you want them to potentially be members of multiple groups, make sure this is yes. And then when they visit the different pages, it's not going to happen on a lot of sites, but when it does, um, you just want to make sure the behavior is defined and you know what's going to happen. So they can be added to multiple groups, um, but just make sure yes is selected then. So if a registered, a currently enrolled user visits one of those pages, um, so this is like another another group's pa registration page, um, then we can control some text there. So just, there is some text on the screen saying, you know, you're, you're currently registered, um, and then just have some kind of link there that, that takes them out of that. So they have to go to that page to switch the group or to get added to that group, but then what's the link text to, um, to kind of get them to the next step? Where do they go from there? Um, so here we can define the text for whatever link that is, and you can you can style it to make it look like a button. You're going to have to use CSS for that. Um, but we need text to, to get them somewhere else, and then where do they go? Um, where do they go from there? So that's where that link goes. And then um, for the four fields that we had on the page, um, we have the heading for that. We need, um, like right now, in my example, if I go back to... Um, to the group, let me go, I'm gonna to have to edit that group. I'll go this way. So over here, and when they see that on the front end, so um, I don't have that open anymore, but if I went to this again, except I'm signed in. Uh, okay, okay, so here you can see this is where those labels are. One, two, three, four, and five. Those five labels, that's what's defined in these one, two, three, four, five. So in a lot of cases, you know, organization might not be the right term. Maybe it's like, um, could be like franchise or school or something else to uniquely identify it that makes sense for the people that are going to be visiting that page. So whatever works for those, um, these can be modified to uh, the labels to fit that. So it makes sense for the audience. So. You can make any changes here. It's going to affect those labels. Save your changes, and uh, and then you're done. You can go ahead and uh, set up all the groups for that. Um, all of the groups do need to be set up individually. So whenever you're creating new groups, if they for the organization information that has to be set up, it can't be set up in bulk. Um, and just make sure you've got all the registration forms set up too. So if you have 10 different groups and you want them all to support front-end registration that will enroll learners into those groups directly, you'll have to set up every single group with the, the registration form. 
Um, so with something like the example that I use with gravity forms, just take that short code, paste it into, uh, into each of the groups. So hopefully that helps. That was a lot of information uh, about this module. There is also additional information on um, the knowledge base uh, article that's on the Uncanny Owl website. So definitely check that out if you have additional questions.